Is that better? Mm -hmm. Is that better? I think I was accidentally on mute them real quick. <laughs> so I'm hoping you guys can now hear me. Let's see. Let's see what happens. There you are, says Jasmine. So all good in the herd. Happy Friday, everybody. It's me, Leslie, and I'm really excited because this week we've been super busy over at Heffy Doodle because <clears throat> it's release week. Well, it's kind of pre-release week. Um, we are in the midst of our sneaks and our reveals. So if you haven't seen all of our amazing um new release sneaks you might want to head on over the last four days we've had sneak peeks giving you a little taste of the new release and today was the first day of our full reveal so over on the blog we have got um some of our new release completely revealed so you can see it in uh, its full glory Jasmine's here already. Hi, Jasmine. How are you? Have you been following along with our sneak peeks and our reveals? Hmm? Hmm? Um, and over the next couple of days, we've got three more days of reveals. We'll be showcasing the rest of the release little by little, day by day, and um, showing you everything else that's included in the release. We've got such a good selection. I hope you're going to love it. And uh, then come Monday, that's the last day of our reveals, and we will have uh, our pre-orders go live in the Heffy Doodle store. Now, as always, we want to give you guys a little freebie. You get a special treat if you place a pre-order at the Heffy Doodle store. So from Monday to Friday next week, thank you. Did you not use my ember? No. Um, from Monday to Friday next week, if you place a pre-order on the store, all you have to do is include one item from our newest release and you will automatically receive a free stamp set. And the stamp set is a just a dot stamp set. What are you saying, Craigie? Do you want to go on to the needle? Sure, why not? We're just going to go live to. Um, sure. Why? Uh, okay, no, we can just crop it out. That's fine. We're trying to decide whether we um, take off my face so I can use the footage later to edit some videos. <laughs> trying to, trying to uh, kill two birds and all that jazz. We have um, Sarah Louise here as well. Hey, Sarah, how are you doing? Jasmine has asked, what time is it going live? So the blog post will go live about three o'clock and the actual um, items will be added onto the store shortly after that. It's normally about five past three by the time it all refreshes. Um, also on Monday, I wanted to let you guys know that we have a YouTube premiere happening at 4 p.m. British Standard Time, which is 1 p.m. Pacific Time. And I want to say 4 Eastern Standard Time. You might need to look that up. Um, but it's 9 p.m. BST. So... Uh, let me close this. Um, we uh, have a premiere, so in that video, I'm showcasing the whole release and also showing you guys lots of samples uh, of amazing projects that the design team have made. And I think you're gonna love that. Get lots of inspiration and see the products in action. That really does make a big difference, I think, whenever you're uh, looking at the new release. So that's four o'clock, mark your calendars. Um, we will have the release live at three for pre-orders and then at four, we will have um, the premiere. But I'll give it a little bit of time just in case we have any um, hiccups at three o'clock when it goes live, but fingers crossed and touched wood and all that jazz. Uh, we have got Cindy here. Hello from Michigan. Hello. Hello, hello, how are you doing today? Um, have you all seen the reveals for today? <laughs> well, I'm gonna be actually using some of the products from the new release and um, please go ahead and shout out if you have any other questions, I'd love to answer them for you. All right, so I have my little book here and I've sketched a couple of designs 
um, to help us get started. I'm just going to grab my tea. Mm -mm -mm. And like, I wanted to let you guys all know as well that, um, like I mentioned a little bit earlier, if you place a pre-order, you'll get a free stamp um, with your order. If it's over £45, you get the dies free as well. So I never did get to show you. This is the Just a Note stamp set. This is what you'll get free. It's really cool because you get this little notebook. But what I actually really like is the pencil and the pen because you can um, put them in the arms, the little critters and things like that. And I think it was really fun. So you get the Just a Note stamp set free with all pre-orders the dies if it's over 45 pounds and for those of you who um aren't ordering through the heavy little store and are getting it through our retail partners it will be available for sale with them from the first of may so there you go there louise said i love seeing all the sneak peek and today's reveal yay awesome all right well let's get started i'm going to start with these guys here which were revealed today. So I'm just going to go and grab a different die set from my stash so I can show you a comparison here. So one of our most popular dies is the Stitched Simline Trio. And this was released last year and it has the eight and a half by three and a half slimline um, size here. That's the popular slimline based on the letter size cardstock, the American sizes. But we get asked a lot about creating slimlines uh, dies for using A4 card. So that is to create a DL size card. And we did it. Dun, dun, dun. So this die set Ooh, I should take out the whole thing. There we go. This die set is called the DL Stitched Slimline Trio. So it's pretty much the metric counterpart of this die here, but the proportions are different to match the metric sizes that are used when you're using A4 card. So the height this time is 210 millimeters by um, 100 millimeters. And then you have, once again, the three dies to create some frames, which are perfect for matting and layering. But there's also this trio die on the inside so you can create some apertures. Now, you can use this die on uh, other shapes. Same with this one. I've used it before on... Um, like an A2 size card um, this way. You can do like two apertures here. You could overlap it. There's lots of options. And even the little square um, bit that you cut out, you can use that as well uh, for extra versatility. So that's all good in the hood. So I'm going to start today with you making a card using these. And I'm also going to use a stencil and this is the stencil I'm going to be using today so hopefully you can see that let me go grab a black piece of card so that you guys can see that make it pop a bit more for you hi Marcy how are you doing this here is our Highlander stencil. So I'm going to be creating a card today using the DL Stitch Slimline Trios, and I'm going to create it using the Highlander. So I'm going to take my largest die, I think, here. Actually, no, let's do the second largest die. And I'm going to create a panel here which will be going on the front of my card and I'm going to ink it up using the Highlander stencil. So I think for this card, I'm going to use some pattern, not pattern card, some colored card. So I'm going to grab a little bit of bubblegum blush. So let's 
trim this down. And then we'll ink it up before we cut it out. Marcy says she's doing it well and says, which size do they fit? The DL or the previous slimline dies? These ones here fit DL. DL. So for this, I'm going to use the Highlander stencil to create a bit of a plaid or um, tartan style background to my card. And I don't want my stencil to move around while I'm inking it. So instead of using my low tack heavy memo tape, I'm actually going to use a little bit of just washi tip, just normal washi tip. And that should have a little bit more grip on there. Oh, it doesn't want to come off. That should be it. That should be enough to grab it. I'll just add a bit more there. And I'm going to ink up this. Now, I don't want this to come over the edge here. So I'm going to um, cover this edge up. So my ink doesn't go over the edge and create that harsh line. Um, so I'll cover it up with my memo tape and then we can slide that across. Ooh, gonna strip off because it's warm. I'm gonna go for a tone on tone look, I think. I'm going to actually use Kitsch Flamingo. Let's see how that goes. Thank you. Which ones do the slimline envelopes fit, please? The slimline envelopes fit the um, American size one. The, so the slimline envelope die that we have this release, have you seen it sneaked? It is not DL. So that's something that you need to be aware of. So over here, we can get slimline, sorry, DL envelopes really easily, but the slimline number 10 envelope, we can't get for love nor money. So we are creating our own with the slimline number 10 envelope die that we have. However, I will say that the uh, slimline envelopes, sorry, the DL envelopes will fit both styles thankfully and the the envelope the d the um oh, what am i called saying the envelope die that we have in this release let me grab it the base section which is the largest section is like this so it will actually fit a card using the middle size of the DL envelope, of the um, metric DL trails. And it will fit the larger size, but there's not an awful lot of width wiggle room. So there is some versatility there. Cassie's here. Cassie says, hey, I love the new stencil. Yay. This is good. And somebody said earlier that this is great for masculine cards. And I absolutely agree. But I also think it's really cool just to create um, like a faux pattern paper look. So now that I have this here, I'm going to move this along to the other side, if I can get it to line up the way I want it to. Do, 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 do. Might have to do two passes to make it line up just the way we want it to. Let's 
So one of the girls in Piper's class, Abby, her mom um, was pregnant and just had a baby girl. So this card is going to be, I think, a happy new baby card for, for Jessica and new baby. All right, let's move this along a bit more. Can you see how that turns out? Can you see? Oh, you can see it really well in the camera. Cassie says, I always love it when six by six stencils can be used on slim lines. Yes, absolutely agree. Just have to do a little bit of alignment. But luckily, it's quite simple. There we go. So now we have our full pattern paper style plaid background. Now, one of the other things that I like to do if I want to create a little bit more um, of a depth, so sometimes tartan, I know I, th I use the word plaid a lot because that's what my American friends say. <laughs> um, but over here we use tartan and tartan is normally actually multicolored. There's a couple of different colors of thread through it. Now this stencil looks really cool if you ink it up with multiple colors. You could have like a rainbow or an ombre effect. That looks really awesome. But uh, the other thing that you can do is add lines across it using another stencil, or you can move this slightly and ink it up again for a different look. That looks really, really cool. Make it by Marco. Becky says, or Carl, I'm not sure. Hi, Liz, it's been a while. Love the Kickstarter, <laughs> love the video. Great hair day. I got my hair cut today. I was so thankful. My mother-in-law had um, a hair appointment and the lady came to her house and she said, I'm getting my hair cut today. And I was like, oh, this is our tomorrow. I said, I'm so jealous. I really wish I could get my hair done. And then she messaged and said, Paula can do your hair if you want. I was there in an instant. <laughs> I'm just so glad to get it off the back of my neck. It's awesome. Yay. Thanks, Cassie. So here we have our lovely Highlander stencil. Um, now, one of the things I've done that looks really cool is if you, um, if I show you the green one here, which gives you more of a masculine look, if you take a ruler and line it up in these thicker white panels, if you take a ruler down there, and run like a red colored pencil down it to create some little fine lines. Even in the middle of this thicker green one, it looks really cool and a real authentic type of, um, uh, authentic type of tartan. Let me show you actually. Let me grab a corn pencil. Let's go down the middle of this guy. Try to get my ruler in here and try to get it straight. Just draw a line down like so. And repeat that on all that, those um, like thicker areas. Then turn and do the same again this way. And you can take more time at it and get it just perfectly in the middle. I'm just doing it roughly to show you guys what it's like. 
and my um, ruler is in centimeters, but I think my boxes are in inches, so it'd be easier to line up with an inches ruler. Of the green. So there you go. There's, can you see what this looks like? Let me zoom in a wee bit more. Looks really cool. Let's also take um, a different colored green now and go in the middle of those little lines, maybe a lighter green. Or you could go with another color, like yellow. Let's try this. It makes it really look like it's um, patterned paper. My pencil's getting a little on the blunt side. But I think you guys can get the idea. So for those of you who have just joined, I wanted to let you know that we have our pre-orders going live on Monday at about 3 p.m. BST. Let me show you, can you see? So pretty. Isn't it awesome? I love it. Um, and I think this technique and this um, stencil, I think it'll just look so pretty, especially um, for autumnal fall cards, winter cards. You're gonna love it. I think I need to sharpen. I need to give myself a little sharpener. To reclaim my point. Get back on point. Let's do these extra ones here. a little bit of time to put these in but I think that the result is definitely worth it. it turns out so cool. There we go. Have a look. What do you think? Yeah, I think it just looks like pattern paper. I hope you guys like that stencil. So that is the Highlander stencil. I'll put that to the side for just now. And get back to my pink tone on tone look. And for the inside, I'm going to go here like this. And I'm going to cut this out of some white cardstock, I think. Let me go grab some white cardstock for this one. Round my dog that's lying in the middle of the room, taking up space. Let's cut this out using 
my white cardstock. And this one is the smallest of the DL stitch trail. And for this one, we're going to also use the solid die that's in this set to create my little trios on here. Let's try and get it straight. Like a so. We'll run that through the Gemini as well. So I'll keep these little um, insert pieces. Sometimes I use them, I just slot them in, and other times I will just leave them, use them on a different card. So let's do that and put these ones back in their little pocket for now. Did my nails this week and now I can't lift a single thing. The way the cookie crumbles. Cindy says, a very versatile stencil, absolutely. And Bronwyn's here, hey! Jasmine says she needs more uh, white card and memo tape. She's running out. Actually, we just had a delivery of memo tape, so that was a good time to replenish. We were running really low for a while there. And sometimes I pop these right back in like so. And other times, I will just leave them, leave them out and use them on a different project. All right, so for this, I wanted to create a baby card. And I'm going to be showing you now some other stamps that's in the release that are not yet fully revealed. So you guys are getting a little bit of an exclusive peeky. Are you ready? So this set is a sentiment set. And a bit like the bold banners, this is going to be used again and again and again. You're going to love it. And this set is called the Wavy Banner Sentiments. So in this set, you get two banner stamps, a solid and an outline, which you can use together or um, just use separately for a different look. And there's also a selection of sentiments in a whimsical font that um, are great for a multitude of cards. And there's one on here that conveniently says, Happy New Baby. So we're going to use that one today. Um, and I think I'm going to use the solid um, little image here, the solid stamp. So let me take this out, move these to the side, pop you down there. And I should have some cardstock lying around from last week. Where would it be living is the question. Let's be over here. Here it is. I'll just trim this down. And I'm going to use the solid one here. Sarah Louise says, oh, exciting. We're going to, let's see, pop it on here. And that will create a gorgeous wavy banner. And the great thing about the 
um, stamps that we have is that for the words, we've actually created a solid line. I don't know what's best like this, maybe a solid line along the top. So you can align it perfectly and position it so it will be right in the center of that banner. So that's a good thing. Let me go and grab um ink. I'm trying to see what color I'm gonna use. Maybe sweet 16 will be a nice color or something a little bit more bluey. This is for a new baby, so I want something. That's really sweet. Maybe we'll go for mint to be. I think that would be cute. I'm gonna have a mint and pink kind of look here. Suzanne is here as well. Hi, Suzanne. This is nice. Now, because these are solid images, I would always recommend that you um use um, an ink that's going to be that's going to work well for this for good coverage so the Catherine Pooler inks are definitely my favorite one stamp and it's done you can see that that's a perfect impression already so even if you don't have a um, inking or sorry a stamping tool then you're still going to get a good impression with just the first time I like to stamp it a couple of times just to make sure that it's nice and bold so the stamping tool is great for that. If you don't have Kath and Pooler inks, pigment inks will also work as well. They work really well, in fact. Marjolein's here. Hey, Marjolein, how are you? I have stamped on here my wavy banner from the new collection. And I'm going to pull out the stamp that says Happy new baby. So hopefully you can see there that the edges is are, the, are smooth or completely smooth. So that means you can align this really easily on the stamped banner and also get it even on each side so that it's in the middle. I'm just gonna pop my head over the top here. Close it over. All right. I think I will maybe emboss on this. Can we give it a go? I'm wondering if white embossing will pop against the mint might be very subtle but we'll give it a go doesn't work we can try again Marjan says hello 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 ink up my stamp and it sit there for a second while we go get some paper And get my opaque white, opaque bright white, in fact, super fun. So I'm going to ink this just one more time for good measure. and then sprinkle with my embossing powder. Hopefully you can see that okay. And we'll get that um, heated up with the heat tool in just a second. The rest of this back into my pot.
and there's a few little crystals on the edge. I'll just encourage them to uh, run away. Can use the little paintbrush for this. I just use a pokey tool, and as I'm kind of touching each of the little crystals, each of the little molecules of powder, I give it a gentle blow, which is probably why the microphone might be picking up some gentle wind at the moment. When I'm doing this, I also take the opportunity to make sure that any fine areas like the inside of the P, inside of the A, has a little gap. All right, let's see if I can get my heat tool to work. Oh, put you on mute first of all. All righty. Turned out beautiful. Just have a look. So this stamp set is called the Wavy Banner Sentiments. And the actual sentiments in it covers all, all the bases. We have let's celebrate, home sweet home, feel better soon, birthday hugs, hip hip hooray, uh, happy new baby, I'm here for you, congratulations, adventure time, hello crafty friend, happy travels, and all the places you'll go. So um, a real fun set for um, this one. Cassie says, gotta run, have a great day. I'm super excited for the new release. Oh, me too, me too. Okay, so next up, this set has actually got coordinating dies as well. So you have two of these little wavy banner dies. And the great thing about this is that they, um, they nest together to create like a shadow. So you can use these on their own, or you can use them with the stamps. So um, if you use the skinnier one, it will cut out the banner, just the little green area. Um, but if you use the other one, it will create that white, um, that white banner around it. So let's die cut these out. Becky says, been loving all the new release sneaks. Yay! We're really excited. We can't wait. We've been getting our um, retailer orders come through and they've just blown us away. Some of the items have been so popular. We've had to do an emergency restock. <laughs> Yeah, but it's a good problem to have. So here we have our little die cut banner. But let me just show you. I'm just going to go and grab my stash of my stash of scraps. We got a link in here. 
I'll just use a pink for now. And I cut out the larger one. Becky says the Highland Coo has stolen her heart. I'm going to be showing you them in a little bit. Gotta love a Highland Coo. They're so furry. That's been the most amazing thing about the um, Highland, Highland cows up here. Just so soft and fuzzy. Super cute. So here's the um, bigger of the two dies and then this is the smaller of the two dies Oop. new nails can't can't pick up and then this just nests on perfectly like this you can see in fact let me just stick it down for you like so and then you will be able to use the stamp on the edge of the stamp to line that up perfectly on the white section here so you can just stamp it exact amount where you want it to go so we're going to leave this to the side might use that on another card who knows and then we have our happy new baby banner here ready for this card so I'm thinking I'm going to put this one in the middle here and um, I might even put some of these in the background or put pink in the background of this one oh I seriously can't lift anything in my fingernails and maybe green in the back of these ones. Should we do that? Should we add a little bit of mint and a little bit of pink? I think that would be cute. So I'm going to go get baby girl. Ink, actually, no, not baby girl. I'm going to actually use fun sugar for this. So I just want one that is sponge sugar. Maybe I'll add a tiny bit of kitsch flamingo at the bottom just for a slightly ombre look and then I'll use mint to be for the other one the other two I should have said And I'm using the um, scrapbook.com domed ink blending foams for those. I find them to be really easy to use. Very happy with them. Although sadly, I don't have very many left. Mm. My phone keeps... There we go. So let's pop this back in here. I think I might make this into a shaker card. And before 
before I do that, I'm going to put down my inside sections. Oh, no, wait, did I do that wrong? No, I didn't, it's fine. I wanted to make sure that whatever's going in the middle has pink behind it to make it pop. All right, so this is going to go right over here. Um, and we're going to, I'm going to create this into a shaker card. So let me go grab some acetate so it can have some shaky bits on the inside. Sadly, I have all of it, a whole release full of dye boxes in front of it. Switch over, please. Don't know where my acetate's going to. Oh, there it is. All right, Spud. Get my dog out. You okay, baby? Where'd you go then? See you later. Off to get a drinkies. So this area we're going to cover up. In fact, let's use this. This is extra thick acetate. I've just uh, added some more of this to the Happy Little Store, actually. So grab some. While we still have it. I'm going to just put some tape around here. So I can attach my acetate to it. Like so. I'll just grab a slightly narrower one for the top and the bottom. So what has everybody been up to this week? Let me know. Let me know in the comments. All right, let's see. And after we get this down and we get the, sh the shaker bits all in place, I'm going to be showing you another new set from this release, which is called Pantastic Painters. So stay tuned for that. Uh, Becky saying that Highland Cows has stolen her heart. Oh. 
nearly there. Fancy nails are always very pretty, but they're not the most functional when it comes to taking off release paper of uh, double sided sticky tape. All right. I also need to make sure that um, sometimes the acetate has a cover on it. Which it does. There we go. Marjan says, my parents had their 49 year anniversary. Wow. So I made a card and bought presents and ordered uh, dinner from their favorite restaurant. Oh, wow, congratulations to your mom and dad. That's amazing. Um, my family's also got a significant anniversary this year as well, or this weekend actually, because my brother and sister-in-law are celebrating 25 years. Not quite 49, <laughs> but... So, pretty incredible. And what's even more incredible is that I completely remember everything <laughs> about their wedding, even though it was 25 years ago. All right. So because I'm making a shaker card, I'm going to use my three millimeter deep foam tape, which will make sure I get lots of room on the card to shake, shake around. Oopsies. And I think I'll get the five mil for those narrower areas in the middle. Like so. And at the top and the bottom. I think it probably could fit the 12 mil in there, but I'll not take any chances. Marcy says, my older sister and brother-in-law celebrated their 40th last year. Wow, that's awesome. It's incredible. Congratulations. Oh, that's just a little bit short. I'll plug the gap there. We don't want any shakers, any sequins and shaky bits falling out of there, do we? All right, so now I'm going to grab a couple of sequins and things. So we can have shaky bits, as I like to call them. <laughs> I think what we'll do is we will have some pinks in the green areas, like so, and maybe just some whites. Well, that's pinks as well. We've got some like little bubblies here. Hmm. How is that? That's cute, I think. Put these back in the drawer.
So I've put them on here just so that um, I can lift this and pop it down, hopefully position it somewhat in the right spot. There we go. Attention. I know. Jasmine's off to bed. Ben's got work tomorrow. But you'll catch up. Oh, do you know what? I'm so silly. I haven't taken off my release paper. So silly. I was wondering why it was sliding around. Night, Jazz. Jasmine, and you're gonna go before we get our uh, next fantastic painters out. Honestly, <laughs> and the uh, the fantastic painters was a set that has been on the go for a while. It's been in draft mode for a long old time because. As you all know, Piper loves her pandas. I'm just going to lean forward a little second while I get this lined up nicely. There we go. That doesn't live, don't. I'll watch tomorrow for pandas. <laughs> all right. All right. So here we have our shakers in situ. I'm going to put Happy New Baby right here. Stick that on there. In fact, we could also put the pink one on at a little bit of an angle and try and give it a shadow. That might be cute. Should we do that? I think so. Just to make it pop against that background. Let's just position that, and that's going to go right in the middle here. Looking good. I think I'll add couple of little pop dots on this, not too much because it's already raised up quite a bit. So let's just add a couple in here. Happy new baby. Awesome. Okay. Pop my pop dots away. And we'll have to do some stamping now of our fantastic painters. Amanda's here. Hey, Amanda. How are you? All right, so I'm going to have two little pandas on this card. So let me go and grab Fantastic painters. I hope you guys are going to love these. So these are our fantastic painters. You guys are getting a first look because these aren't even revealed yet. And there's some cute little pandas, an easel, there's paint brushes, there's paint tubes, there's all sorts of fun sentiments. So much fun. So let's get this little panda stamp yeah. and this little panda. And I'm actually going to use um, one of Amanda's ideas for these pandas because this is a new baby card, as you can see. And I um, saw that Amanda made a card with the pandas and there's a little line across the panda's belly or uh, across just as midriff and 
And that's there because pandas normally have a black section on their top, on their chest, and on their arms. So that section is like the line where you would color the gray or the, the black in his arms. But actually, when Amanda made her card, she colored in the bottom section and it made it look like a little diaper. It was so cute. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to turn the bottom section into diapers on our pandas. <laughs> yeah. Amanda says, oh, I know what you're doing. Yeah, you called me out on that one. <laughs> Let's get this inked up. Cute little pandas, so adorable. And see this little guy here? He has actually got an internal cut line around his paw so you can tuck elements into his hand like the paintbrush and um, all that kind of fun stuff. So let's color in these pandas, huh? Come on, grab some markers. So we're going to grab C7 I have here to get some dark grays on the go. And we have a C5 as well. Roberta's here. Hey, Roberta. Hi. So let's blend this out a little bit. C5, and then we'll grab a C3. That is a C1, that is not a C3. C3 is hiding over there. And in fact, I might actually just make the C5 the lightest. And make C9 the darkest. Make it pop a wee bit more. Roberta says, is this a sneak peek? It is indeed. This is the Fantastic Painters stamp set from our new release. And I've also been using some other things from our new release. This one here is called the DL Stitch Slimline Trios. And here I've used the Wavy Banner Sentiments and Wavy Banner Dies. And the background here, we have our Highlander stencil. And it looks so cool. I think that um, everyone was swooning over it earlier. A really cool stencil. It looks really good tone on tone. And then let me show you what we did earlier. Here we inked it up with uh, green ink and then using colored pencils, added some lines just using a ruler. I think it makes it look really cool, almost like full pattern paper. Looks really cool. All right, I've completely forgotten about this boy's ears. Let me take them and his little eyes as well. I want to make them dark, but not too dark that you can't see his little smiley eyes. So that's good. Roberta says she's loving stencils. They are good fun. So C5, I'll have down here as well. C5, 
and C7 to blend them out. For our little cute panda. Let's not forget his little feet as well. And um, even though his face is white, um, we will actually add a little bit of um, a C0 or a C1. Let's add a little bit of um, shape to it because otherwise he looks a little bit flat next to the rest of the... The colored images. There we go. I want to get a little rosy cheeks and maybe a little pink nose to tie in with the pink on our card. And um, we give him a, a darker pink mouth. Oops, that's not a darker pink. And a nice light pink. R00. Are they cheekies? This card is for a school mom who had a baby girl this week who's called Ella, but the, the lady's called Jessica, and Jessica had a baby girl called Ella. All right, so I want to give these pandas little diapers. So, what does a diaper look like, huh? We could put. Um, just a couple of lines on it. Um, what way does the diaper go? Does it go across here? I feel like there might be a little pin here. We'll just add a pin like this. And then down here, maybe we will just give them a smaller diaper on this one I'm using my pen and we'll color those in let's see how they turn out we'll go pink Our little diapers. Super cute. There we go. And I'm going to go a wee bit darker on the pink just to try and bring a bit more of those same tones in the background here. So maybe R32. Down here. Love it. And then for the tiny pin, I'm going to just put a bit of a teal bit on there. So now I have my little pandas, two little pandas. They're super cute. And even though they are fantastic painters, uh, today they are playing the role of little panda babies. So let's see if I can get my dyes on the go. I 
hiding on me. What did I do with my pandas? Oh, they're right here. Silly me. So we'll cut out this little guy first of all. Like so. And then this one, which has the internal cut line. We'll cut out next. So now you'll see that this has got an internal cut line here where you can tuck items underneath his little hand. It makes it so easy. So we have got two pandas, little cuties. And the question is, what are we gonna put in their hands? Hmm, what should we put in their hands? Put this cup over here so I don't tip it out. Roberta says the slimline shaker is, is so cute for a baby card. Super cute indeed. So I think we'll put something in his hand. Let me go and have a look and see what I can find over here. We could have... a... Um, we could have a love heart. A love heart would be cute. Or a little balloon. A ball from the otter set, maybe. Or an envelope. Envelope would be sweet as well. Or a gift. They could be holding a gift. That would work. Obviously, I need to create some baby accessories. <laughs> a little rattle or something like that. Let's right, see what you guys think. A balloon saying it's a girl. Mm hmm. <laughs> Roberta says, I'm feeling better, thanks. First dose of vaccine made me really tired. Yes, I've heard that, that certain vaccines can make you super tired. All right, in the little shellfish stump set, there's a little gift. Uh, let's see. Oh, actually, the pinwheel would be adorable. Absolutely adorable. Let's do the little gift as well. You know, they have a little tiny square here. Marcy says the diaper is such a cute idea. I'm just actually going to clean that off first of all. That's better. Yeah, I think the pinwheel will be adorable.
I'm not sure if it's going to fit on here. Might have to expand to a bigger piece of paper. Uh, might work. We'll give it a go. A present in the other panda's hand, says Roberta. I think that's a good shout. So we can have a present next to one of them and a pinwheel next to the other. We could have little pieces of bamboo as well. We do have bamboo in the Fantastic Painters stamp set which would um, actually tie in, we could put some minty colors in there, that would work too. Let's go a bit darker. And some of these pinwheels. Go. The present in front of the top panda. Yes, it, there's like a space here that could work. I think that could work indeed. Let me just get a little bit darker. So here we have our cute little pinwheel. We could put the pinwheel here. And maybe the present down here. That would work. What do you guys think? Should we do that? I'll blend this out with our minty greens. Looking good, looking good. Let's bring our die cutting machine back in. present here and a pinwheel. Roberta says it will be so cute. moved slightly but I think it'll I think it'll still work. This is so cute. I'm loving it. Let's stick these down. I'm gonna use my glue dots to stick these little pandas down.
This one here kind of looks like he's waving a little bit. Adorable. I'll just stick this one down beside him. So cute. And then this one. Up here. And I'll not stick down his paw just in case we decide to stick anything in. I don't think I will, but I'll not stick it down for just now. Put a little tiny glue dot on the bottom of the handle of the um, pinwheel just to secure it. There we go. And I think that's pretty much the card done for our baby card. Let's take a closer look. Here we go. We've got our shaker card using the DL stitched slimline trios. This will fit into a DL size envelope. This was actually the middle sized thing, I believe. There you go. And this will uh, create a gorgeous card. We've got the inside the smaller of the three stitched panels, which has also this trio in the middle, create a shaker. And I've paired that up with the Fantastic Painter stamp set. Slightly altered to give them little diapers, little nappies, and then had my wavy banner sentiments on here as well. I think that's going to be such fun sets for you guys to play with. Cindy says, oh, cute. Mm -hmm. And Bellamy says, it's gorgeous and most definitely unique. Ah, yay! Awesome. Let's put that away for just now. Put these behind. And see what's next on the agenda for us. So I think what we'll have is some Highland Cows. So let me introduce you guys to the next stamp set. This one was actually revealed today. Um, just update my old focus. Um, and this stamp set is called Highland Honeys. And it has got um, a little Loch Ness Monster, which I think you could definitely use as a dinosaur. Well, I guess the Loch Ness Monster, the legend is that it is a dinosaur of sorts. What is it? A plesiosaur or something like that? So we have a little Loch Ness Monster and we also have a Highland Cow or Highland Coo if you want to be, um, you know, Scottish about it. We also have a little baby Nessie. Um, and then a selection of other elements in here. The mountains are going to be great if you like doing scene building. Um, we have got a little thistle, had to include a thistle for Scotland. Some grass, we've got a fence, some of these sort of evergreen type trees. You're going to love them for building scenery. So I think let's make a card using these today. So let's grab a piece of card because the other thing I wanted to show you was the Marvelous Mountains stencil. Ta-da! Let me get a piece of black card stuck again. 
So this here is the Marvelous Mountains stencil. <laughs> Marjane says they will be so happy with such a beautiful card. Ah, thank you so much. It is a cutie. They, I think the Highlander stencil makes it look so pretty. Having the ability to create your own plaid effect background, I think you'll get a lot of mileage out of it. My favorite is tone on tone, I have to admit. All right, so this is the Marvelous Mountains stencil. And a bit like our cloudy sky and green fields, etc. The way that you use this stencil is that you take your card and you slide it into the gap here. And then you can ink up your own mountain range on the back of your card here. If you slide it this way, it covers your mountain range and you can ink up your sky for another look. And once you have inked up your mountains, like a so, what you do is you simply move your stencil down and you can add snow caps to the mountains. You can see here the little snow caps. So here I have inked up my mountains using the Marvelous Mountains stencil. just like so, and I use my ink blending tool to get a lovely ink background. But then if I twist this slightly, hopefully I'll catch the light. Can you see? I've added the snow caps using some glitter paste. That looks really cool. Here I've added it using embossing paste and you get a really cool texture on it. That's really awesome. Um, here we have added it using some gel pen just sort of kind of do some cross hatching on the gel pen. Gives it a different look, but still really cool. And here's another one with glitter paste. I'm trying to move it around slightly in the camera so you can see it. It looks really, really cool. So the snow caps are gonna look awesome for uh, use with this stencil. So let's grab some card and See if we can create some snow-capped mountains for our little highland cow. So let me grab a piece of card first and foremost. And I'm going to actually use for this card the... stitched rounded rectangle dies. So these were revealed today as well. And these are definitely going to be the, um, they're definitely gonna be the staple in your stash. But like your stitched rectangles, your circles, your squares, these stitched rounded rectangles, I think you're gonna use again and again and again. And the great news is we have an imperial version and we have a metric version. So if you use letter size cardstock, the imperial is what you're gonna reach for, um, which is a quarter of a letter size. And if you use A4 cardstock, the metric is what you're going to reach for because it is a quarter of an A4 piece of card. So I'm going to go for, I mean, it doesn't really matter. The effect is kind of the same. I think I might go for the, the longer of the two today, just to give you some variety. Um, and on, on the inside, as we were getting smaller, this gap in the middle was getting a little bit like unusable because it was a weird aspect ratio. So instead, what we have done is created some smaller dies that we think you'll be able to use in different situations. So for example, this square one works really well with the muchas gracias and also the hairy birthday. Um, but other sentiments as well, like the classic sentiments are gonna look really good in these little, um, these little stitch panels. I think they'll look awesome. So let's grab these, I hope you, gonna enjoy them and we'll go for white cardstock to start with just now and we will ink it all up create some mountains 
Roberta says you can make a robot with one's middle. You definitely could. That is a really cool idea. I love that idea. Definitely need to do that. All right. So let's add some, let's create some mountains first of all. And in fact, maybe what we could do is create a panel on my card where we're going to have some inked areas. I'm going to attempt to do some straight lines here. Hopefully it works. Okay. So I've masked off some areas on my card for now. I'm just going to trim this down so I can get it into my stencil. I'll keep these for later. Marcy says, I see that too, Roberta. And I'm going to create some of these ones at the back here. There's my dog wanting in again. Bear with me a second. Well done, Major. Secure that down. Hello, Spudney. Come on in. And let's grab a brown brush to add some ink to these. So I've actually just grabbed my um, brush. I'm just going to go and grab a bit of ink as well. Maybe some walnut stain for a darker look. <laughs> Roberta says, I don't know why, but I immediately saw Rosie from the Jetsons. Awesome. Yeah, that would be so cool. I think you'll get a lot of mileage out of those little stamps, to be honest. All right. Here's our mountains. And these kind of stencils are really useful, especially now because I'm sure everybody has realized that um, it's getting more and more expensive to send like thicker cards through the post. And one layer cards, cheaper. So this and another one of our upcoming stencils, which is called Loads of Roads. You'll get to see why it's really cool and um, you'll be able to add lots of sceneries and things to create your own um, one layer card. So for the bottom section, I'm gonna add some grass. So for this, I'm going to use my green field stencil. Like so. And I think I'll have this one. And for this guy, I'm going to add a bit more tape to secure it down. Uh, Marcy says, nice, so do I. <laughs> so true. Let's stick this one down here. And we'll add some green fields to the bottom. I think I'll use 
some lucky clover. Roman says it looks like there is a mummy Nessie and a baby Nessie in the stamp set would make a great baby card. Absolutely. And actually, one of the sentiments says sending you a little happiness, um, which is cute because the, the little baby happiness or the happy Nessie is very happy Nessie. Right. So let's. this down. Also another cute baby card would be um, the dinky dinos. Very cute. That's my green field done. And then I'll just remove my mountains here and I'm going to give this a quick wipe down and to add the sky I'm going to put my stencil in the other way so this time I've got the little humpy bumpies on the front and we're going to position this once more and there will be a little bit of an overlap and that's completely normal just because you have where the um, stencil, the width of the stencil makes, makes it a little tiny overlap. Let's stick this down. Like so. And for this one, I'm gonna go grab the Cloudy Sky stencil. Why not, huh? Cloudy Sky stencil is definitely going to create a gorgeous sky for us. So I'm going to use a little finger dauber like I did last week. Um, but this time I'm going to go blue, true blue. True blue. Might actually go for broken china. I've not played with that in a while. Hopefully. A little bit of blue on the bottom edge, and then we will add in some clouds over the top. And using the finger dauber just allows us to have more layers, I think. Because you just have a little tiny bit of ink. I'll scooch it along. And keep going. There we go. So that's our cloudy sky stencil. And our marvelous mountains were covered to get those in place. So now for our snow caps, we're going to position the stencil in place. Line it up 
secure and then find something to add that nice white snow top to it. Now I have some embossing paste which I have planned to use and I actually when I went to use it sadly it had a crack in it so the whole thing dried up which was not so fun um, but I'm sure I have something in here that will do the trick. I have some gesso and what else do I have? We could do transfer foil. That would be cool. Maybe the transfer gel duo. Actually, this is something I haven't tried yet and I really want to try it. So let's do this. So this transfer gel duo is um, a two-way use gel, transfer gel. So you can either use it with heat or without heat. So for this one, it says tape stencil the paper and apply the iCraft Deco Foil Transfer Gel Duo across the stencil using a palette knife. Uh, let, oh yeah, gel dry for one hour. What time is it? Hmm, I might be pushing it. And it says cover stencil design with Deco Foil Transfer or Flock Sheet and then place inside a folded piece of parchment paper and put through a laminator don't have a laminator run through a manual die cutting machine to apply pressure and peel away the transfer sheet to reveal foiled or flock design let's give it a go because i've not done it yet and i like to do fun things let me go see if i can find a palette knife where would i find a palette knife i think it would be over here Mm -hmm. So I have a pot knife in here. I'll do the trick, I think. David at uh, Macmillan says, oh, those clouds. Yeah, they're so good. Love that stencil. All right, so that's it. That wasn't really, doesn't take an awful lot. So I've just added some of the gel to my snow cut mountains using a palette knife. Kiki says, yes, I have to have that stencil. It's so good. It's called Cloudy Sky Stencil. And I think we only have one or two in stock at the moment here, but we have a delivery that was supposed to arrive today and didn't. So it might arrive on Monday. So I have applied the transfer gel. I'm going to uh, peel away my stencil now and give it a good clean because we don't want the gel sticking to our stencil for a long, long time. While I have you here though, have a look at this. Look at the dimension on that with the gel on it. Doesn't it look really cool? So let's put this to the side for one minute while I clean up on Isle Mountain. All right. And we will peel off this section here and the bottom. So you can see what the card is looking like. It's kind of taken shape. And it is 10 to 11 just now. So we'll come back. Oops, sorry, not focus. 
um, the 10 to 11 is nice. We'll come back to the Pearl Midnight and that'll be the last thing we do for this um, card probably. Um, but I'm going to stamp and color the Highland Kai because I think you're gonna like it. So this gel is called the Deco Foil Transfer Gel Duo. And this is also in the Heffy Doodle store. So you're gonna love it. I just know it. Um, I think I only, ha I don't know if I've got any flock. I think I have just foil but maybe the silver foil would look cool on here. I'm liking it already. I'm gonna pop this over to the side for now. I hope I don't, hope I don't forget about it. <laughs> Let's put my mountains back for now. Here they are. And that's the Marvelous Mountains stencil. Let's stamp a coup. <laughs> Let's stamp a coup. Put away my little pandas first off. And in the Fantastic Painter set, there's the easel, and I told you that there's also um, paintbrushes and things, and the little bamboos. Oh yeah, we could have put bamboo back here. Um, but there's also, if you can see, like a little, almost like a Copic marker design. Can you see? It's cute. And a pencil, of course, too. So, okay, so cute. Let's grab some paper or card even. Oh, actually, it's over here. And we're going to stamp our little coo. Crafting Sunshine says, what was it called again? And that was the Deco Foil Transfer Gel Duo. So here is my Highland Goo. And I think I'll stamp a little, a little bunny uh, Scottish hat for him as well. And maybe we'll do a thistle. And a couple of trees. Don't know what will fit on our in our little scene, but we'll see. Oops. So this is the first time I've used this stamp set. So just to prep my stamps, what I like to do is add some embossing paste to them. And then wipe it away. And that just gets rid of any residue that is left over from the manufacturing process. Another way that you can do that is um, take a clean eraser and just rub uh, the eraser over the top of the stamp. That works also. Let me put this brush away. Ness is here. Hey, Nessa, how are ya? Here's my little. Highland Coo. And let's color it in. So this is from the Highland Honeys stamp set. And I have to admit in our house, there was a little bit of a debate over what color the Highland cow should be. And some of our um, design team as well have colored it brownish. He is kind of brownish, but he's actually quite um, ginger, I guess would be the color I would say. Rather ginger. And he's 
very hairy. Gingery. With browny undertones. Nessa says she's good. How's everything? We're really good. It's been busy, busy with the new release. Pre-orders open on Monday. So I have, you can't see, but I have just got yellow boxes galore. All my DHL boxes over there are ready for our retailers to go out the door come Monday. And we've been absolutely blown away. We've even been on the verge of selling out of a few items. Um, but don't worry, I have made sure we have enough for the Heffy Doodle store. Or at least I hope I have. It's kind of hard to predict sometimes. Peggy says, it's so cool to see the new stuff in action. I really need to go to bed now, unfortunately. <laughs> That's okay, Peggy. Don't worry, you go to bed. I'm sure I'll have more um, live videos over the next week or so. Hopefully I'll catch you then. I'm glad you've been able to join us for a little bit of crafting tonight. So that's my little Highland Coo. Looking nice and gingery. I need to give him darker feet though. And maybe some darker bits. In the shadow bits, shadow areas. Uh, where's that other one gone to? Marcy says, hi, Nessa. Let's add some green to our trees. Added a little bit of an orange, or not an orangey green, a bluey green to the center there, just to bring in some of that tone from the lucky clover that we have on our inked background. And what has everybody seen so far on our sneak peeks or on our reveals that um, has taken their fancy? Have you got anything to share with us? So this here, in case you're not familiar, is a thistle, this little image here. I'll Hold it up for you guys in just a second. And that thistle is the Scottish national flower. And it's a spiky little guy. He really is. Let me show you. And that's what it looks like. It has a sort of a round section in green and then a big puff of purple fluffy hair almost. And there's your little Highland guy looking super cute. So let's cut these out for our 
next project. We'll, we'll cut these out and we'll put them to the side and we'll um, use our foil on that other piece of card whenever our time is up, whenever the gel has um, dried. So Nessa, you've just joined us, but I inked up a card using the Marvelous Mountain stencils. And also I have used the Deco Foil, what's it called? Transfer Gel Duo to add some of the gel to the mountains using the stencil because it has a snow cap section. And um, with the deco foil gel, you can add silver foil or flocking. Flocking would be really cool. Nessie says, have you had your hair cut? I have. So excited. Thank you for noticing. I absolutely have. Yes, yes. We got it done today. And I'm incredibly grateful for it. Piper was complaining it was too short. But she was happy when I told her that I had made an appointment for her to get her hair cut. <laughs> so there we have two little trees. And these are all from the Highland Honeys set. I'll move that closer so she can actually see them. It's in the Highland Honeys, which has some awesome little um, stamps for scene building. The mountains are particularly good, I think. And trees you're just going to go to again and again and again. Especially for Christmas time. Nessa says looks great. Thanks, Nessa. You're so sweet. So here I have my little thistle. Looking cute and prickly. And I have my little tiny little bunny hat. For these little guys, um, you might want to do the same, but sometimes I just keep them together in little bundles, like the bundles of three here. They get a bit small if you put them down individually, and then they're more prone to... Um, doing a Houdini. Here's my little hat. And that's going to go on the head of my little Highland cow who is coming right up. Snippity snip. Here he comes. Look at 
There we go. So we can already see that they're going to look so good. Creating a little scene. Little Highland scene. Let's have a look. There's my cow. Grass. Thistle. I could put his hat on him. Look. How cute does he look with his hat on him? Adorable. And somewhat hilarious. <laughs> All right. So these guys are going to sit to the side while I um, wait for the other um, things to dry. So let's have a look at what else we're going to do. What else do we have today that was sneaky sneaky? Let's have a look. Oh yes. Let me show you our um, scalloped imperial frames. This set has got four frames. It's a bit of a thicker frame, especially compared to our uh, skinny frames. Um, and with the scalloped edge, I think it looks really, really cool. And you can pair these up with things like the stitched imperial rectangles or the frames, pardon me. Um, and you can create really cool like, shaker elements with these. Fun little tags. This almost looks like a picture frame that you could put um, a picture behind. Be great for um, scrapbooking as well, I think. Let's see if we can create a card using our uh, scallop imperial frames. So let's go for. Um, let's go get some cardstock first of all. I'm actually going to grab. A purple, I think. So I'm going to use grape soda for the frame. Like so. Let's run this through my gem and and M and I. And then you get to see this in action. So here we have our scalp frame. You also get the piece from the inside, obviously. And um, you could just layer that on the inside if you wanted to create um, a different look, or you could raise one up, pop that on the inside. Lots of different styles there for you. I'm actually going to, I think, create a card that um, has got some, uh, so let me just double check the size of this. Where is my other cards? Yeah, so I think this will look awesome layered up onto an A2 card. So let me go grab piece, piece of card so I can, oh, this one's already creased, good job. This will fit perfectly onto the front of your A2 card. And that's the largest of these scalloped imperial frames. And I think what we'll do is add some, I add a die, and this is a new die from our collection. And it says, probably seen this in the sneak peeks. And hopefully you can read this. Can you read what that says? <laughs> I 
I'm sure you can. Congratulations. Well, I think I'm going to use this as a, a card for my brother and sister-in-law. I mentioned earlier that they're celebrating their 25th wedding anniversary. So I have some scrap card here. And I'm going to run this through the Heffy Doodle Mini Die Cutting Machine. And this is the Congratulations Shadow Heffy Cuts. So, of course, it means there is a shadow die to go along with this as well. Let's pop this out like so. I bring my bin in and poke out all those little, all those teeny weeny itty bitty bits on the inside. Just pop them straight into my bin. There you go. And I have my congratulations there. And we can use the shadow die with this. We don't have to, we could just use it on its own. So let's see what happens. What are we gonna do now for the rest of this? Put this one away. I think I might create a background using the raise the roof stencil. I think that would be really cool. Maybe we'll go for um, a bit of a multicolored rainbow look. Oops, I'm gonna need that out of the way, first of all. Let's grab the raise the roof. from over here in my stash here it is and it's going to go right in the middle in fact I'm going to ink this up on a different piece of white card and then cut it out because I don't want any on the outside area. So let's do it like this. I'll stick this down. In fact, I can probably use a purple tape because I'm not going to worry about it ripping. And we're going to add some colors to this stencil. So let's grab a couple of inky colors. I'll have some shaded lilac to start. To bring in some of that purple tone. Not a lot, just a little bit. Some of these areas. I use some of my pink also. In an area. Some yellow. Over here I'll use the blue. A little bit of green. A 
Maybe back to a yellow. So these are quite subtle, these colors. And it'll look something like this, fading into the uh, white areas near the top. But I'm actually going to move my stencil and add some more, um, more vibrant colors as well. Let's see if I can move my stencil along. Or we might even be able to flip it. Let's see. Yeah, we can flip it. Okay, let's clean up my stencil first of all. Like I saw. And we'll flip the stencil so and move it down a bit so it's not lining up perfectly. I don't want it to line up perfectly. I want it to be a bit different. Overlapping a bit, but not much. Maybe like so. And we'll go for more vibrant colors this time. So for the vibrant colors, I'm going to go for some oxides. Here we have Twisted Citron. All the way up. I'll have... Mustard seed. Um, no, squeeze lemonade. Let's do squeeze lemonade. Here. And over here. And we'll go back to the kitchen. Kitch flamingo, should I say? Oh, actually, no, let's do picked raspberry. Why not? Why not pick us some raspberry? Just realized I said I was going to do oxide and I've completely gone rogue. Here's my picked raspberry. And we'll go for some wilted violet. Down here, and maybe a nice blue, like salty ocean. Down here, I'm going to grab my darker blue. Oops, it's over here. pull this off no actually I'm actually going to clean it first of all and then I will reposition it and then I will add some splatters let me get your comments back
All right. So we have some overlapping rays coming up here. There's some white spaces, which I'm probably a bit more than I wanted. So I'll add a wee bit more ink to it. But I do still want some white. So we'll go easy with that. Let's see. Just tilt it ever so slightly. Or a bit more. Blue up there. And a light blue. Oopsies. And a bit of overlapping green. And over on this side, we'll have a bit of pink. And a bit of yellow on this side. Like so. There we go. We can very much get that rays effect coming out now. And we'll splatter this with a little bit of maybe some pixie dust. Liquid pixie dust is always fun to play with. Let's cover it first of all and see what we can do. Fun Stamper's Journey Sparkle Silk, which would work. I've also got a glitch, a glimmer mist, tattered, tattered angels, glimmer mist. Either one of these will work. Let's do the glimmer mist. If I can split it like this, give it a good shake up. To make sure that you can redistribute the mica particles nicely. And then take out the little spritzy stick. This one tends to fall in a little bit more of a lodge. So I'm not doing that one today. Let's see. Roberta says she's loving the colors. Good, good, good. Pop oh, that stencil away. Let's hold this up closer for you guys to see. If I tilt it, you can see some of those little gems that looks like where the splatter has fallen on there. Looks really cool. So this is going to go behind this and then we're going to have congratulations on the top I think like so and I'm actually thinking I'm I'm going to do a shadow now because I think we'll need it to pop out against that um that background I think that would be cool all right let's see if we can I don't seem to have any um ah here's one Paper towel. Bob likes the colors too. All right, so for this, we're going to use that same dye, the scalloped imperial frames. And that just helps us get the area that we really, really want. And if we line it up nicely, we might even be able to reuse the frame from this one. 
but I'm not really overly bothered about it just now. Not the frame I want, it's the inside. Here's my inked frame. I've got a little bit of a line down here where the end of the stencil was, but I think you could probably um, make that work still or even use it this way. That's really cool. I like that. We'll pop that into the back of our die pocket for a potential other time. But this little magical bit on the inside is really what we're after. We're gonna stick this onto our card. So this is going to be fit really snug on our front panel of our card. And then right in the inside, we will have our raise the roof section. So let me just grab good old Gluebert and stick this in. nice and snug down in here. And I think this will look really cool if it's raised up. So I'm going to raise this up and I might actually put some acetate on it and put the congratulations on top here. So let's die cut our little shadow for the background. I'll use a scratch piece of card here. Sarah Louise says lovely colors. I think it's really bright and vibrant. Really pretty, pretty, pretty. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Okay, so um, let me go and grab some, oh, I'll put some tape on this first of all, and then I'll go and get some more acetate for this so we can build up our shaker panel. I think now that I have my Heffy Doodle foam tape, I'm really obsessed with making shaker cards because it's so easy when there's only one layer of foam required. So let's see if I can find my acetate. Here it is. Oh, not quite long enough that way. And this way it will work though.
along here like this and then up here right here and these like thin little panels thin little pieces don't throw them away because if you're ever making like a box card so for example something like this where we have the box this little bumblebee is held up by a piece of acetate. So it's really useful to have little strips like that. So keep hold of them. Don't throw them away. Let's pull off my cover. And I used the same acetate earlier, so I know there's a cover on this one. I'm just not very good at knowing which side it's on. Marcy says, I love using your foam tape. It makes making shaker cards so easy. Yes, that's why we developed it, because I was so fed up. having to use multiple layers. Oh, come on. Does anybody have a trick for finding the... Uh... Finding the plastic on your uh, acetate? It's being super stubborn. Oh, it doesn't have one. I feel like I have this com this all the time. Use scotch tape on both sides and then pull off. Okay, let's grab some scotch tape and see what happens. Okay, that's not coming off there. Neither there. Let's go to a bit that I haven't massacred. Maybe there is none on this one. Maybe I've already pulled it off. Okay. Guess not. Probably explains why I've been struggling with it then. <laughs> you want to go out again, Ranger? Give me a second, please. All right. So let's stick down our frames to the acetate, or our acetate to the frames, I should say. Let my dog out while I'm here, while I'm struggling with this. Oh dear, I'm all fingers today. Roberta says, mine only has a white sheet of paper between the acetate sheets in the pack. Yeah, every, different, every pack is different. Sometimes they put a piece of like parchment paper in between. Sadly, mine are all mixed, so I don't know one from the other. There we go. Put that down there, like so. I'm going to add my congratulations to the shadow. And to do that, I'm going to use just little tiny bits of glue bird. The uh, glue pen that we sell in store is also good for this. 
the glue pen though you have to kind of put a wee bit of pressure on it so you'd have to put it flat on the table whereas with glue bread I can do it while I'm holding it and I feel that that makes it a bit easier especially with some of these days where the font is kind of nice and delicate so let's stick this down Nice. And there is a little tittle to go on here. I'm just going to add a bit of glue burt to here. And then rescue the tittle from the die. So that's going to go right on the front of our project. And for this, I'm going to stick it down using some glue dots. To get a nice secure bond to the acetate. around about here. And for this, I'm also going to use a new die set in the new release, which is da -da -da -da, our stitched balloon dies. Here they are, stitched balloon dies. So in this set, we have two balloon shapes. We have a square, a rounded square balloon, and then we also have a um, sort of standard balloon shape on the go. You also get two little dies to die cut the, um, like a reflection on the balloon, and you get a straight die to create like a balloon string. But my idea for this is that we're going to have balloons on the inside and they're going to kind of float around somewhat. <laughs> and they're going to move around a little bit. So I'm going to create, I think, three, um, two or three balloons. Let's see, where's my scrap piece of the card? And maybe we'll go for a teal color. Oh, actually, no, maybe a mint color. Let's see. A light pink would be good. And a mint. I mean, we'll get some mint. Oh, 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 I see some mint in here. Nope. Is it going to be? No. Okay, I need to go grab some mint. Bear with me. banana color as well. So for these ones, I'm actually going to cut two of each color. Oopsies. 
There's one yellow. Two yellow. And then we'll have two of this minty green color. Hint of mint. One, two. And I want two pink if I can make it work. And these balloon dies are going to be really cool because you can create balloons for your little critters to hold. You can create um, die cut balloons. You can do the inlay technique. There's so much choice with these balloons. I think it's really cool. More pink needed. Look, okay, I have some here. Now we're getting near the um, one hour mark for the transfer gel, which is exciting. We'll get to play with that before too long. See if we can finish off this card. So the idea is that we need to have three balloons in here. I think that somewhat wiggle. I think. Um, and I'm going to layer them up. So to make it wiggle, I do need to have um, some like string in behind them. So let me go grab some string. I have some string like so. I don't need these anymore. And I'm going to stick one on top of the other. But before I do that, I want to add a little bit of dimension. So let's grab my ink blending tools again, just very quickly. To add a little bit of dimension to these. A little bit of color. Maybe I'll go orange with this one. And a bit of orange to the bottom edge of this one. Pink for this one. And a little bit green on this one. A little bit of blue. Try and get a bit of a teal, a teal feel, should I say. Now with my scrap cardstock, I'm going to just very quickly cut out a couple of these little shiny, shinies, yes, we'll call them a shiny. Roberta says, loving the colors you are using. Yes, inspired by our Effie Doodle color collection, our cardstock collection even. 
Let's stick these down. Um, I've kept the two little shinies together. One fits the rounded square balloon perfectly. The other fits standard balloon shape. But they're kind of interchangeable. There's not that much difference between them. Stick these together. A little, uh, little bit of glue bird to get us going. So the smaller of the two matches the square balloon. Like so. And then the longer goes on the rounded edge of this other balloon. like so. So let's pop these over to the side for now. I think they give such a cool effect with the stitching and just like a fun style and a great shape, a great um, size as well. Move this over to the side so we have a bit more room on the go. The bin bag is overflowing. So now I have my three um, balloons. I'm going to take some of my string and I'm doubling it up here just so that I have a little bit more um, so that I can see it easily more so than anything else. And I'm going to take some double sided sticky tape like so. And I'm going to put it onto my first balloon, like this. Peel off the backing and lay down. my string a little bit too high up here lay, it, lay down the double string now I'm going to sandwich this string between another piece of sticky tape in an effort to try and make sure it doesn't move around and then using the same color of card stick that right on top like so now, if you want to, you can try and position it so the string comes out at the bottom, but it won't really matter all that much because we want it to move a little bit within the card. So we're going to do that again for our other two balloons. So let's grab a bit of string. So this is actually called metallic embroidery thread, and it's like a white metallic. So it looks really um, pearlescent, I think would probably be the word that I would use. It's quite pearlescent. Um, it's very subtle. Very pretty. Oops, I've lost it. Got stuck to my watch. Stick this down. 
Here I have my next balloon ready to go. And last but not least, here we go. Let's see if I can get my thread put away. Pop these in here as well. Sandwich that together. Nearly there. Get my pink on there too. Awesome. Right, next stop. A little bit of foam tape action. And I'm going to use my 5mm foam, if I can find it. Here it is. To go all the way around this. To create a channel. For my shaker. And right in here, put it up, smoosh it down, bada boom, bada bing, baby. All right, so here's where our trick lies now. Um, we're going to adhere this to our foam tape, but we want to make sure that we have our little shaky bits in situ. So let's go and see what I can find in my stash for my shaker bits that would work really well with these, this color scheme. So I'm thinking actually there's some like dew drops that I have from somewhere that would work really cool. Let's see what I have. These little guys. They'll be really cool for sure, for sure. And these ones as well. I think they're actually the same. They're just all different size, all the big size, those ones. What else? I have some gold citrus bark embellishments, gold and silver, some pinkies. Pink's quite nice as well, and the blue is quite intense, so probably not going to do that. Okay. So let's just get my comments back. Sarah Louise says, the balloons are awesome. They are, We're, I think you guys are gonna love the balloons. Luckily, because they're a small little die, super affordable. Just what you want to hear, right? <laughs> All right. So for our balloons, we want to have a little bit of a shake to them. We need to work upside down a little bit. We're going to put the balloon where we want it, like so. 
and pull the top one pretty much taut. And then the bottom one is going to be loose. So this is going to wiggle like so. And then I'm going to have the yellow one next. And it's going to be a little bit lower, I think. But this one can shake a bit more. Ooh, give it less than that. There we go. And then the green one will go up. I want it to overlap this one a little bit. Maybe a bit higher. Make sure it's the right way. Want it, oh, actually too high. About here. And we want it to have a bit more freedom as well. All right. So then all my balloons, tails, I'm coming off and I'm just going to go ahead and put in a few of these. These are too, too big, thick, I think. Let's put the little ones in. Put a little of those little ones in and we will put in these pink sequins. And let's put in some of these citrus burst for a bit more of a shine. I feel like I want some more white or like clear. So let's see what I've got over here. Here I have ones which are iridescent, the pink tint to them. That'll have to do. All right, so we're going to transplant this down, making sure that we've got all our... Um, I try to make sure that there's no sequins on the white area where my uh, foam tape is going to be. And I also try to make sure that when I'm putting this down, my balloons are facing the correct way. Let's adhere this down and give it a little rub. If you wanted to, first of all, you could remove the um, strings, but I'm finding that it's just as easy to snip off after the fact, like so. especially if you have a pair of scissors with a little sharp point like I do here. <laughs> Marcy was nervous. Now I've got a whole lot of strings and things here. Give this a little smoosh. And now I have, oh, these two have got a little bit stuck. There must be something behind it. Let's give it another smoosh. He's not wanting to move. He's got something stuck behind him. Let's have a look, see if I can see. A little bit of surgery. Sometimes, if you can, just encourage it to open up a little bit. The sequin that's obviously doing the damage will dislodge. I think I'll leave that for. Uh, off air but you can see how my pink one is moving 
and that's what the other two will move like once I've given it a good talking to. But let's go and grab this. Here's my mountains. Let's have a zoom zoom. Kind of looks a little bit on the yellow side, but I think that's probably the just the brown coming through um, from the from the inky. I don't think I have any blocking, like I say, but I do have foil. I'm in my stash of foil. I have gold, I have silver, um, and I have, I don't have white, but I do have this one which is like a holographic silver, which might be kind of cool. So what do you guys think? Normal silver or holographic silver? What do you think? Should we go for normal silver? Holographic. Holographic. Okay, let's try the holographic. Let's give it a go. Here we have a holographic. It's wide enough for the whole width of the card, or the card panel. It's not actually made into a card set, but it is a card panel. So trim that down. Um, I'm going to actually put it through my uh, Gemini because it's um, not small enough for my Happy Doodle Mini Die Cutting Machine. I'm just giving that a little massage. I'm going to secure it in place with some memo tape. And let's see what happens. This is exciting. Okay. So I'm not sure whether you're supposed to run it through several times or anything like that. So I'm just going to go ahead and give it another little rub. And slowly pull it back. I need to zoom in for this. You guys need to see this, I think. <laughs> 